Hi everybody, thank God for today, thank God for his faithfulness, thank God for the glory of God in our life. The Lord has given us a message to the church, to the ministers of God, the preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to pray this hour, Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit the message today before thy throne of grace. We pray that you speak to your children, speak to every one of us in Jesus' name, and we bind and break the hands of the enemy that stand against this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, this message today, the Lord has given to me is kind of this unity in the church. So many things that caught this unity in the church. I'm going to start pretty fast because um, most of you know my message based on Revelation. And as a matter of fact, if I should reflect back and when the Lord started visiting me, the first thing the Lord started showing me are people that are dead, people that are in Hades, they are in a place of total torment and sorrow, and I want to ask questions. And the Lord told me that these people were not going to resurrect when the trumpet sound. And I kept asking why. When I started asking why, this how God started revealing reasons why people are not going to make heaven. And the Lord started revealing to me so many messages, what people do that cause them to not to live righteously, for God and so many that are being deceived and misled by false preachers, false prophets. So those of you that are following my messages on Facebook and YouTube, you come to know that most of my messages are based on revelation. I do not write messages and as the Lord gives me, that's the way I bring the message out. I do not add, I do not remove. Praise the Lord. Today, it's got this unity in the church in the body of Christ, in the Christendom, I'm going to tell the book of Revelation, uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13. It says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 said, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. When the message that has to the revelation that has to do this portion of the scripture, I was brought out. If you follow my message, even my message to the church, and the last one I gave the anger of God. This is part of the message that followed the same the same revelation. The Lord is taking me segment by segment, showing me why some people are not working effectively to make heaven. A lot of us call ourselves Christian, but some of some of some people are not living right. There are so many things that are affecting some Christians today. So the Lord brought me out, you know, in a I, I was in a far place. I saw a huge building. This building is very huge, very bright and beautiful. But I saw crowd of people going round and round this huge white building. I was watching from far where I was watching, but I noticed that just like I noticed that just three people walking through the door of this huge building. These people, people were going round and round. All of a sudden, I was just brought out to see all these people but on the side i saw something like a tent and this tent there's a, a creature like an animal that crawl in that tent and come out to walk between the people go back in that tent i didn't know who this what this animal represents but i know one thing the bible says something you know be be sober be vigilant it does in the book of first peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The, mind you, these are Christians that want to make heaven, but this creature keeps going back and forth. This is the portion of the scripture I can see, I can use to qualify this scripture, this creature that I saw. All of a sudden, I was taken out from this group of crowd of people. I was taken from there and looking up the sky. I saw the sky open. A third road from came down from came down and touched the ground. I looked up deeper. There were heavenly being, beings, so white looking down from heaven. They did not come down, but waited up there looking at the at the third road connected to the earth. You know, but there were you know when the, the tree the, the road came down, but there were there was a tree there were tree that was blocking people walking to that road that leads to heaven. You know, 
by the side, this tree was preventing people from passing through the road. Some of you know, I, I write most of my messages so that I don't forget anyone. I give message just as raw as I get them. That's the way I just release it. Praise the Lord. I saw some preachers came closer to walk through the road to the heaven. You know, the tree on the right side can continue to block the way. And none of these preachers was able to pass through the road connecting you know connected to the sky to the heaven i saw a preacher vividly the preacher wept looked and was watching as the road was lifted or back to the sky and the sky closed up i was i was surprised while these preachers were standing there brethren the same creature again on the side again while watching the preachers the creature in the form of an animal came there again in the tent covered with a white fabric the animal crawled in and out of the tent as before you know monitoring and following up the preacher remember what the, the scripture we read what are the adversary the enemy he will run about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour then i saw a thick dark creature you know in the form of a human let me read it just the way I saw it, brethren. Then I saw a thick dark creature in the form of a human talking with somebody who was not a dark creature but a human being, a man. The creature has so much evil aura around it. You know, the, the, the men looking at this creature, I felt detestably uncomfortable, so dark and thick, you know. I want the man talking to this dark looking creature. They appear to be in a deep discussion. I observed the person which is a man, you know, put his hand, you know, like in a deep thought, looked up and down, thinking, and later nodded his head, while the dark creature had some, something in his hand. When I looked, I saw it was a ripped Bible. The front, the back, and some pages of this Bible was ripped, but I, and I saw this, this Bible in the hand of this dark, evil-looking creature. The dark creature kind of smiled, nodded his head, and the man equally nodded his head, Together, they, you know, showing that they have agreed to something, you know. And I, you know, this brought me to uh, some years ago when the Lord called me in the ministry. I want brethren to just listen attentively, you know. When the Lord called me in the ministry, I remember there was a day I was called up while I was sleeping. I didn't know where it was. I was called up and I was brought in a huge meeting, you know. But when I was brought there, and that week I had a conference in Lagos, Nigeria. I had a conference in that, in that, in that period. So I, when I was called up, all of a sudden I found myself in a room. There was a file before me, and I saw two men in suits. They stood. One of them said, we want you to sign. I said, what, what do you want me to sign? He said, we want you to be a preacher of just faith, a, 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 a you know, motivational faith preacher. We will, we will increase your anointing. We will bless you mightily all over the world. You will be known all over the world. Just preach what we want you to preach. When I looked very well, I noticed that behind me, there were dark creatures behind me. It was like a church. They were calling me to kind of head a church, you know, a, head, you know, a branch, a, a church itself. I said, no, I'm not going to sign it. You didn't call me. Jesus called me to the ministry. They were so angry. I noticed that the two that were in front of me, all of a sudden just changed like a, a, a horrible creature. I said, I'm not going to sign and I'm not going to write any agreement with you. You know, all of a sudden they were, you know, they were kind of threatening me. They are going to do so many things to me. They are going to do so many things to my family, my husband. They are going to bring poverty. I said, the blessings of Jesus is already for me. I'm not afraid what you will do. So let me just cut it down there because if you follow my book, I have a book written, Many Are Deceived. There I wrote a lot of the messages the Lord revealed to me. So many churches that are not founded in Christ. So these are some of the experiences I had. So when I saw this, in that revelation, I refused to sign. They threatened what they are going to do. Then the Lord, I, I was quick. Immediately I rejected. I was not going to sign it. All of a sudden, there was earthquake everywhere. There was a bright light. Pull me out of that crowd and I found myself in my room. I was asking, what was that? What is going on? That was, I was, the Lord clearly made it understand to me that if I had agreed, 
That means I'm not with him. I said, I don't understand. They want me to sign an agreement. What is agreement? What agreement they did? They want me to head a church. I will just be a faith preacher, a motivational faith preacher. Working for the devil. I will get so many crowd known anointing. But brethren, that is destruction to hell. Many are called, few are chosen. Jesus knows those that are his. The calling of the ministry have a lot of challenges. You, you have to experience a lot of things like Jesus. It is not a bed of roses for a preacher. So when a preacher is called in the ministry, it is Jesus that called. Whatever that goes on in the ministry, Jesus is in charge. The Holy Spirit leads. So let me keep that. When my book comes out, I'll publish it. And many people will say, that's where I wrote a lot of the stories of all the revelations the Lord showed me and churches that are not founded in Christ. So with this, with this, when I observed this, this dark creature talking to this man, then it took me back to that message, what I experienced. But at, in this revelation, this person accepted because, you know, I saw the, 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 the creature nod the head and the man nod the head. So if you look back, the, the creature in the tent will come to know what it is. So then I asked, what is that building? Let me go back to the first revelation, the building I saw. I was told that the building is heaven. Only few are going in. I asked why. The Lord replied and said, because many have unforgiveness, jealousy, bitterness, hatred, but heaven does not have such. As the Lord was speaking, he took me to a city. We walked from far and that city is so, so beautiful. And I noticed that a lightning went fast like a, like a star. And I did not see anybody. I quickly asked, what is that star like? Light. The Lord said, that is an angel on a mission. Then I asked, where is everybody? The Lord said, I have to come and pick as many that are obedient and committed in my word. And faithful in their calling because many are called, but few are chosen. That's book of Matthew 22 verse 14. Let me go on because of time. I give you the revelation the Lord gave me. When God calls somebody, you know, serve, we, we are not serving ourselves, but to live exemplary life for Jesus Christ, like Jesus did. You know, we walk together in Christ. We serve God and fulfill God's desire to win souls for heaven. You know, it, it, we are not coming into the ministry to serve ourselves. You know, we have to follow the footstep of Jesus Christ. That is the calling. But there are so many things happening in the Christendom. And ultimately, and if, you know, we are invited, we are chosen. You, If you are a Christian, you are chosen, you are called to make heaven. So some of these things that the Lord is revealing to me, telling me that is the reason why some people are not making heaven. Please, I will encourage you when you get this message. Reason, think about your relationship with God. Then the Lord explained the road to heaven. He said, preachers are supposed to hear and communicate with God often, but the tree stopping them, especially today, are tree of anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness that has built up to jealousy, competition due to pride and lack of humility. The Lord said, preachers will be criticized as he was, and many will go through a lot for the gospel, but some built up anger and unforgiveness. Instead of praying to the Father for mercy, forgiveness, and for God to save those who hurt them, like people who hurt us. I know I come on Facebook, I pray, people call me a lot of names, people cuss me out, there's a, a preacher that call me immoral, this person don't know me. So you will see that there are some preachers that come to the platform with anger. Some people come to the platform with pain. They carry their problem to the platform, not knowing that whatever you experience as a Christian, as a preacher, brethren, give it to God in prayer. Jesus called. Human being did not call. You have to speak to God about every situation, not bearing grudges. Bring your anger to the platform. You preach, you preach what you feel about people, and that is not what God is giving to you. That's not what the Holy Spirit is giving to you. That's why a lot of Christians are not making heaven. They're not going to live a life that is heavenly bound. They live a life that full of anger. Heaven have no unforgiveness. Heaven is full of love, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. 
the preacher rather did not forgive. They hate and curse those who criticize them on the platform. They bring their anger to the platform and preach with spirits of anger and hatred. These are the reason many will not make heaven. They were not able to climb that road leading to heaven. The tree that was blocking is a tree of pile of anger and jealousy and hatred that has been blocking them. They don't want to forgive. They don't want to let go. Preachers don't live like this. Jesus didn't give us this example. When people curse me out, I respond and bless them in return. I say, don't bless you, but I just want you to read the Bible. Pray and let the Spirit of God give you wisdom with revelation to his word so that you know where you stand. People criticize a lot, but preachers, we must not hold this against them. Look at the creature that was on the side. That is the devil bringing anger, bringing hatred, bring, making us to... Causing not bringing reasons why preachers should hate people. That's the devil. He's roaming about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If you are called in the ministry, please, I beg you today, learn to let go. Put unity in your in, in your in your in your vineyard. Put love, put brotherly kindness. Praise the Lord. The third one, I said. Then I asked about the dark creature and the man. Who they are? The Lord said, the dark creature is Satan. Making contract agreement with a preacher. Satan will give power, anointing, wealth, and popularity. While the preacher will be a representative of Satan. Preachers who are jealous, impatient, with pride, wealth conscious, and without love, love of Christ for lost souls. For Satan easily connects with them fast to deceive people against heaven. You see the journey of the devil? When I saw the creature, he has a Bible. Yes, many are motivational faith preachers. They are very, they, they learn motivation. The devil have its own anointing, brethren. That's why I kind of encourage some people when I see what they post on Facebook, I try to correct them so they will not be misled. You have to be scriptural. Most of you that follow my page, we, you know that Every message I get, it has to match with scriptures. If it's not matched with the scriptures, I cannot bring it out because the Lord confirms his word. Praise the Lord. The creature showed itself not like the animal, but it changed and stood like a human creature. But the nature cannot change, which is dark evil. So the creature is like a lion, like the devil is like a lion, like a roaring lion. But it later showed itself. It was looking for a preacher that is not patient. That's why we have a lot of preachers, false preachers today. They perform fake miracles that does not last. They pour soda on people. They, you know, they, they judge body, people, body, body structure to know if they will conceive and all that. These are false preachers. People just look at money and think that you think that being a born again child of God is being prospered with a lot of money. That is not what Jesus preached. For you to for you to be fulfilled, you have to be in Christ. Say, seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then every other thing shall be added unto you. There's a step Jesus laid down for us. I love the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Other apostles that follow disciples of Jesus Christ, they come up with so many doctrines to be able to gather the crowd of tradition of people they led during their time. You know, because people always push ministers so hard i know if you're a preacher i will encourage you let the holy spirit guide you i know people are going to turn in the flesh like paul but i want to encourage you do not hold anger against anybody i'm reading the book of second peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 11 and it says and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar. And see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from sin. Praise the Lord. Verse 10 says something. It said, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling an election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. 11. 
For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then step by step in the ministry. As a Christian, there are so many things that adds up. You have to have brotherly kindness. You have to have charity. You have to have patient love for people. Even they hurt you. Just give it to God and pray to God to give you the mind to let go. Praise the Lord. We cannot keep holding grudges. Pastor, you cannot come on the platform and start preaching your anger on the platform. You cannot keep holding people, cursing people out. It reverses back. If God did not lay it to you, that curse has no effect. Rather, you are the one hindering yourself making heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 to 11 said, There are things we need to give up. And those things is like your ego, pride, self willed ideas. You know, your, your opinion, thoughts, and feeling, desire. Many church leaders create doctrine and practices and they are ashamed to change. Even after realizing their mistake and truth. Praise God. I'm going to read that portion of the scripture. But I want to bring this before us. Based on what we have read. You know, brotherly kindness, charity, patience. I want you to know one thing, brethren. Let us let go of pride. Let go of ego. You know, self with ideas, opinion. Let us re remove thoughts of our feelings. We don't bring our feelings and desire on the platform. Let the spirits of God lead. Many have put in so many things across in the church and they do not follow it. They find out that some of the things they have introduced in their ministries are not scriptural. And they come to realize that there are some things that need to be changed, but because of pride, they choose not to change it. And pastor or evangelist, prophet, uh, 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 teacher, this will hinder you from making heaven. Just like what I saw. James chapter 5 verse 16 said, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The, term, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You will pray, yes, but some prayers cannot be answered when you have these grievances in you. Your prayers cannot be answered when you have this unforgiveness, this unity in the church. Look at the revelation. Many are not going to make heaven. Many preachers are blocked by disunity, hatred. You preach in jealousy. You, many emulate. As a result of that, when they don't connect with God anymore, the devil take over. The devil give them anointing. They go to shrines. They go to evil forests to gather a power for anointing. And they use faith. They use, they choose the portions of the scripture that suit their evil minds. Their evil mind to please the devil. They preach those areas. That's why you go to some churches. People, people, they live in like Jezebel. They live like, they live immorally. Many churches are being polluted by immorality because the devil is in charge of those churches. These are the example. Many are called, but few are chosen. Few, many are not ready to be patient and go through the journey of ministerial training in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to close with this portion of the scripture. We read it in our prayer. Colossians chapter 3, 12 to 14 says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy, and beloved balls of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive you, so also do ye. Verse 14 said, And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. Uh, there's something I want to encourage you. Please, please, this unity in the body of Christ is not what Jesus taught us. Jesus showed us forgiveness. A woman that was caught in immorality. Jesus told them, if you say you have no sin, cast the first stone. But some people be there condemning somebody's past. The past is the past. Let us move on with one love. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Let us be one in Christ. This revelation the Lord has given to me. Please, many desire heaven. But they are not following the rightful way. Forgive one another. Pastors, live hatred. Forgive, forgive each other. Do not let your ego push you to hell. Many will go to hell. 
Many will preach and, and then at the last day they will not make heaven. You people judge by outward appearance. I encourage you, judge righteously. That's what the Bible say. Do not go out condemning people. The measure with which you judge that person, that's the measure you are going to be judged. And mind you, God has not made you a judge. So I want to use this. I want to encourage you. I'll go back to the portion of the scripture. I read the first time before I ran off this message. I encourage you, brethren, please put on brotherly kindness. Forgive one another. Let the church come together. It's like there's so much disunity in the church. There's so much hatred. There's so much jealousy. There's so much bitterness. You see people preaching. They preach with anger. People, some people communicate with me. You see a level of anger in them as like, why must you preach on Facebook? Brethren, I am called as an evangelist. If I do not give the message God has given to me, I'll be held responsible. That's why when I preach, I do not add, I do not remove. Proverbs 28, 13 said, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 said, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. As you hear this message, please may the Lord bless you. Forgive one another. Forgive your brothers, your sister. Forgive that pastor. Forgive that preacher. Do not go in preaching out of jealousy. You are the one losing. Don't go, don't carry your anger to the platform. This is the message the Lord is giving to me. Many preachers are not able to connect to God. That's the road from heaven that is connecting, came down to earth. But the tree broke you because that's the tree of jealousy, hatred, bitterness, envy, anger, unforgiveness. You cannot connect to God. If you cannot connect to God, what are you giving to the people? That's why there's a lot of crowd of people. Going round and round, they cannot get into heaven. Why? Because there's this unity of forgiveness and jealousy. There's transference of spirits. You pastors, go to God, cleanse yourself before him. So that when you preach, the people will be blessed. As you hear this message, share this message. Let every pastor get to get this message. Every preacher, every prophet, every evangelist. If you have come short in any area, go to God in prayer. He will surely guide you, forgive you, the blood of Jesus has been atoned for us. So remain blessed as you hear this message. And I encourage you to share. This is a continuation of the minute message to the church. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we beg for forgiveness. We hand your children before you, Holy Spirit. Convict every heart that hear this message. As they go, Holy Spirit, touch their heart to forgive. Bring unity, bring peace in the church. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you hear this message. This is Catherine Favor. The ministry is Catherine Worldwide Evangelical Outreach. May the Lord bless you all. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name. Amen.